don't know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Enable swearing. Fuck yes. I don't give a shit. Be careful on the road. Uh, but I mean, I walked down to a noise. No, which is very busy for such late hours. Okay, I think I'm full. I shouldn't spoil it. That lady couldn't. You called out before. Those snacks only made me hungrier. Ouch. Some the strongest. Just the wind almost blew me away. I barely managed to catch her. <laughs> Thanks. Looks like it's gonna rain. I think we should call it today. Yes, excellent idea. I think it might have sounded too enthusiastic. Hey, Decky. I think you told me that you had something important to tell me. Yeah, I don't feel like saying Decky. Just gonna yeah, erase that. Bye bye. Uh, yes, yes. Indeed, I have a finale. For me. For us. I hope. Everyone deserves a story a thousand times. Childhood friends, same playground, same playground, same school. Same hobby, same games. Try every other day. And it went like that until our parents purchased an apartment on the other side of the city, so they went to another school. We started to see each other less frequently. The less we met, the more I understood. I don't want to spend just my child with her. But not the rest of my life as well. Yes, I fell in love. And today is the day I had to confess her about it. But it didn't happen. I did everything by the book. I'm preparing for this day. So I asked the cafe I even worked on the speech. But in the end, it shook him down. So I confessed my feelings and spent the evening chatting about some nonsense stuffing our mouths with snacks. Anything to avoid talking about. But on the other hand, I have where to hurry, right? It still means spend time together as friends. It means the chance she won't accept me. That she would close herself off and stop talking to me at all. There's plenty of stories like that as well. Why? I risk everything for some new relationship. That's like break even changes, right? At least I'd be more comfortable thinking that way. However, I still managed to blurt out that I had an announcement for her. What part? Are you even listening? Yes, yes, I just want to tell you that. that I, of course, don't want to tell her anything. I was actually looking for something expensive to lie about. Got my answer. Dumbass. Seriously? You're the best. Wow, that worked. Okay. He got lucky this time. What? Fuck, gotta go. Yeah. See ya. See ya. Next time. She doesn't know that. Right? Right? No, oh, wait. I am the dude. Yes.
knocked on the head. I, uh, made a fucking retard. I'm so sorry, that's just my fucking shit. Tried to give a girl a hand, but she didn't even look. Stood up on her own. That's just, just my nightmares. Yeah, cool. Left, the girl shut her eyes and played for a few seconds. Picked her bag and took another seat. Wow, that was just disgusting. Previously, nightmares were only a penny. This time, they also scared around the past. I should apologize to her somehow. On the other hand, this is probably this is the last time we'll see each other. Yeah, about that. I highly doubt it. I don't think she's interested in my apologies. The best I can do is not fall asleep again. Oh. Tommy. Why'd you come back? Almost a year has passed since that terrible accident. Many months of therapy. And now, a long way of relief. But as soon as I take the first steps towards a normal life, anxiety and nightmares return. Although, what did I expect? Starting a new life after so many months within four walls? Of course, my subconscious is trying to reset, resist. However, the doctors say I'm no longer in need of constant vision and can return to a normal existence. But can I? What awaits me in college? For all that time I was in therapy, I, lo I only lost friends and acquaintances. And now I have to. Enough! I already know where this is going. Dead, I'll draw something. I think it shows to college psychologist. And reconsider if I have a visual, a future in visual arts. I mean, an art therapy course is not the best springboard for future arts. Hmm. Nonetheless, the anxiety went away. I was left alone with the desire to fall asleep until the end. Never have I traveled this far from home before. The hours by train to some sick town, then I had to get on this bus. Where am I anyway? One day shows me that we are already far from the city. Here they are fields, forests, country houses. Ideal. Maybe I should have moved from a great noise city to a place like this a long time ago. Or it's the case that this place wasn't one looking from afar instead of being part of it. To what extent can I ever be a part of something? Let's find out! Act 1, A Tale of Dreary Hall Hills My legs carried the bus, I end up on the stream the college entrance. It was a thousand times repainted with... Was a thousand times repainted white fence overgrown with ivy. Next to it are benches and a completely full trash can. Though it would be colder here, especially in autumn. But no. It's almost hot! As soon as I begin to relax, I notice that black haired girl got off the bus right behind me. I just thought you were gonna get away, toughness. Yeah, right. I mean, yes, there she is. The travel bag, a college uniform. I guess this is not just a random passenger. Yeah. Now she noticed me too, giving me a scornful look. Of course, it's because of what happened on the bus. Just standing here. The girl looks around as, around as if searching for something, but then turns to me again with a disappointed look. Yeah, I guess that you're not to me. I think I should play in the mood somehow. Ahem! Great start. Decide to come early too. Not the reaction I expected. Look, my name is By Pilot. I'm really sorry about that incident on the bus. I did I ask? Can you just not talk to me? It's not a question, by the way. Just do it. I'm not angry. Doesn't mean that we would do anything together. But you have to fact, I guarantee you that I, that you, will see me as little as possible. And thinking about me even less, you won't remember me until the very end of the semester. When you see my name, I'm gonna drop it. Word. 
looked around again and decided to sit in the nearest bench, took her phone, and disappeared into it completely. Yeah, I have a feeling these names aren't going to be easy. This is my first cup to the person in months. Well, maybe I did something wrong. But most likely this girl. Most likely the Sakurako is just not the right person for anything. Stooped, shaggy, with faded gray eyes and healthy acne colored skin. Even if she participated in conversation, it is most likely on an anonymous image board. I know from experience. Do I look like that too? Do I act like that? Fortunately, another unpleasant chain of thought was cut short by the appearance of a figure at the gate. A figure of the tallest girl I've ever seen. Very long, very long legs and dark stockings. Big bust on her maybe blue blazer. Hey, big blank hair and two jumper surprise. Wow. She leaned on the column with her back foot like a gargoyle, not even looking in our direction. Holy shit! But we were staring at her to the point. I was shocked and amazed. While Sakuko was irritated and full of contempt. So, isn't she the one who was supposed to meet us? I glanced at Sakuko, but she was clearly not going to show any initiative. This tall stranger has some kind of weird aura. Next to her, you feel especially miserable. I didn't even know how to approach her. Especially now, when I just had a very unpleasant experience. Ahem, ahem. Can't go wrong with a big cough. Dumbass. Let's get a go to smile. Or maybe you can. This girl is clearly ignoring us at first. Not cool. Very awkward, actually. So am I just gonna stand here? Or maybe I can sit on the bench? Ah, uh, never mind. Sakuriko decided to occupy it completely by putting both her legs on it. Fuck. Honestly, I'm tired of sitting anyway. Guess I'll check my phone then. Ah, great, no internet. This day just keeps getting better. Just call the parents, I'll text them. Alright, call you this evening. I didn't want to call them this evening or at all. Our relationship became difficult after my traumatic experience. I think it was hard for them to come to terms with the idea of their child requiring some, some kind of special treatment. I even, I even remember feeling guilty about it. They always tried to stimulate my social activity in any way. On the other hand, I preferred to cut myself off from people. Did I come here to get rid of my parents as well? Or finally, make a connection with someone? I took another look at the two completely distant girls. Doing great. Okay, I'm just gonna literally stare at my phone pretending to read something until something happens. And it did. Another bus arrived that brought other students. They were already talking to each other, whispering, laughing. No one gave me a stecker coat more than two seconds of their attention. The tall one immediately attracted everyone's faces. And next to her, all conversations became quieter. So, small crowd assembled, and everyone was obviously waiting for something to happen. Like right now? We were supposed to arrive at exactly, uh, 8. Now it's, uh, 7.57. Probably someone will come soon. Some time passed, but it didn't happen. Okay, let's begin. Suddenly, with a loud clap, the gargoyle came to light. Oh, she just stood there. Made us wait. Is this punishment for being punctual or what? Gather around. I'll count you. She commanded us with a snap of fingers. It seemed like her body moved towards her almost on top. Everyone was silent. I'll go with a couple of quick looks. What is missing? Too bad. Welcome to our, our, our college number 13 7. Her commanding tone and meet her soft speech and tour guide. My name is Sik Sku Kim Ko, the president of this college, and I'm so glad. Here I come! I'm not late. Hi, everyone! An unflicking pink haired girl on a bicycle appeared out of nowhere. That might be me. She jumped off her bike and turned out to be the smallest girl I've ever seen. Okay, maybe not in height. I'm average. I think it's a problem. I think I noticed that she had problems with the R sound. My name is Sugi Akira. I'm a tailor. This is 
study here with you, and I really, really hope that we come best of us have lots of fun. Yeah. Jeff plays a blur bird in her speech. Could you please tell me where I hiked my bike? The girl was loud. That I. The girl was so loud that he tried to come herself with such a small body. Loudness? Yes. Definitely me. I'm very loud. There was reason why she couldn't. Drop to the ground, the circle with the others, and make sure I don't see you for the rest of the day. Two girls, blue shaking. One from fear, one from anger. Uh oh. Silently. Poor, poor girl obeyed and disappeared into the back of the crowd. Well, Miss President put herself back together. Ahem. Let's do this again. Welcome to our colors number, thirteen seven. Eh. Her voice immediately became sweet and calm. My name is Sisko Kimiko from Princeton College, and I'm so glad to welcome all our new students. Let's not waste any time and take a quick tour of college, then you can change to your uniform and have breakfast. You can, the, you can enter the canteen only in uniform, I will be there watching. And finally, at 8.30, your class begin. Follow me. So we have less than half an hour for a tour, changing clothes, and breakfast. Yeah, I ain't wearing no uniform. Judging by the faces around me, I wasn't the only one who had to question this mine, but no one dared to ask it. We went through the gates and found ourselves in the main square, which was more like a whole park. Huh? The foundation stone of this college was laid 150 years ago. Blah, 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 blah and so on. Boring speech was with boring facts that this president has clearly repeated dozens, of, if not hundreds, of times. Class to begin in half an hour, I haven't eaten anything. Instead of changing and having breakfast, uh, listening to information that I'll forget in two minutes. The main building in front of us, the dorms to the left, behind them is the stadium. Do we need to do anything else? And it's all. Now, I'll give you the keys to your dorm rooms, and you either already have your uniform, or you'll find it in your rooms. Fuck your uniforms. And you should be in class in 15 minutes. Don't be late. I'll be there. Watch. Look at her. The tight schedule is just because it's the first day. She's clearly enjoying herself. Anyway. <laughs> Big sister is watching you. I didn't know this took place in 1984. Anyway, I took the keys and entered the rundown door building. It looks like someone lives in the room next to mine. I'll leave introductions for later. I knocked... I went to my room. There was no one inside. Visually, it was divided into two parts. To the left was a junkyard. An unmade bed, a bunch of men's, and not only men's, clothes, lewd posters on the wall, slippers on the floor, one slipper to be precise. Oh boy. Sounds perfect. The other half was sitting uninhabited. I guess that's mine then. It was too sterile. The interior was so simple. There was literally nothing to catch your eye. Previous residents could have at least written some sort of swear word on the bed or something. Oh, don't worry. I got this. I guess it just reminded me too much of a hospital room. Ew. Now I didn't even want to be here. So I quickly undressed, opened the closet, and pulled out my uniform. Yeah, no, I ain't wearing that. I'll just take everything but a jacket. I'm putting on my hoodie instead. There's no time to stand here and look in the mirror. I still have to make it too. Hello, neighbor. Canteen. Tall, blonde, manly guy appeared out of nowhere in the middle of my room. Uh, hi? According to the documents, my name is Ken. I live here. Finally, I'm getting a roommate. Seriously. I was kicked out, so I didn't have anyone to talk to. That one time. Wait, what's your name again? I need to go to the canteen. Uh, hello. I need to go to the canteen. My name is... Sh let's go, Ken. Am I being rude? Well, I was about to go there, too. Mind if you keep company? But isn't it rude to walk without knocking? I guess it's his room, and I'm just gonna thinking. Okay. Yeah, fine. Let's just hurry up. So you won't even tell me your name. Oh, I'm Bob Pilot. Rainbow Queen. I just don't want to be laced on my first day. 
It's okay, just don't think about it. Let's chill out. Chill out. Sure. This college has been here for a hundred something years, and will at least and will be for at least many more. You have no need to hurt. And like that, we walked to the main building and turned out the beautiful stone structure, which actually looks to be at least 100 years old. But it was way less intriguing inside. On the first floor, right at the entrance to the canteen. Oh, hello again. What's up, boss? You're supposed to wear a jacket, freshman. <laughs> so cool, doesn't even know that I'm not in need. The uniform. You can't beat me. She let us through without even looking at Ken. Apparently her cold attitudes were not for newcomers only. Good to know. You two aren't getting along. Haha, <laughs> who is? You need to chill out. We skipped to come someone like her. Like what? Functional, meticulous, boring dictator with a whole bunch of complexes. I'll be specific description. So everyone here is insane like me. Found common ground. If you know what I mean. It's almost every girl in school, but I decided not to touch this one right away. It's always been like that, and like it's worth the time. Speaking of girls, do you have anyone? This question stirred something inside of me. No, I don't. With a neighbor like me, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> well, that was uncomfortable. Yeah. But anyways, we entered the dining room. It was very busy. We had to stand at the end of a very long line. The place is t clearly too small for that many people. Yes, so being late because you were here is absolutely fine. Really? Well, I think so. That's a no, then. Time had passed, so I could finally buy breakfast. I was like... No, no. Small ladies first. Haha. <laughs> Ken pulled me back, letting the pink girl step in front of me. Hello. Again, I... I... Ayaka, I think. Oh, thank you very much. I looked at Ken with eyes full of despair. I felt betrayed, nothing more. Yeah, I already don't like Ken. Now I think she... Now she thinks you're a great guy. You're welcome. Yeah, right. Hey, can I punch you in the face? Anyway, pink girl... Haired girl, or... A good half the menu while I settled for a couple of stale buns and tea. Ken took some desserts while flirting with the cook. He then tried to start a conversation with me while, ch while choking on a strawberry mochi. Good! We finished our meal and I went to the corridor. Well, it was nice to meet you. Alright, nice to meet you. Later, friend. It's really that simple. You can have breakfast. Someone call this person a friend. I see it. Yes. Sure, sorry if I was rude. <laughs> ah, I'm just telling you, take it easy. Okay, bye. Ken made finger guns that disappeared to the crowd. Why you got through my fucking fungalitis? See ya. Just take it easy, people like Ken. Everything's probably easy. For example, where am I supposed to go now? Which room? It would probably be very useful to learn this during the tour instead of facts about the stones. I started wandering the corridors, huh? Just more across any situation. I f and I found one on the second floor. Almost seven fucking feet of it. God fucking damn. I'm um, sorry, I only arrived this morning. Do you happen to know which class I'll study in? Huh? I'm one of those who arrived today at eight. I even made it on time. Remarkable. I'll even pretend to not know. It's you didn't pay attention during your tour. I told you that you'd study in the 101. Ouch, my Eh, 104. We're almost there. Thanks a lot. Sorry. Doing my best to get out of her sight as quickly as possible. Well, maybe Ken was wrong. I should be a bit on edge about my fucking surroundings. He looks like a person who's prone to mistakes. You know, I found my classroom and went inside. Large green board, portraits of prominent thinkers on top of desks, cabinets, just like in a school. There weren't a lot of people in here. Most importantly, the teacher was absent. I took a random seat in the middle and started waiting. It's nice to, to be late. It's nice to. It's not nice to be late on the first day. 
A few minutes later, a man dressed in semi-formal clothing came in. Oh, I knew that your group was going to be late, so I decided to come late myself. A self-satisfied smile spread across his dry, wrinkled face as his eyes counted the students in front of him. Looks like everybody is here. Hello, everyone. I'm not late, am I? girl bust into the classroom and immediately flew to her free seat. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like 90% just me. Loud. Fast. As you say. Pause for a moment and continued. My name is y Yoshika Kanushi. I will be your head teacher. Your first year will not be much different from high school, except that you must choose a club according to your speciality. Must. To help, make, to help you make your choice, I, we will have an open day at the end of the week, where all clubs will show their achievements of the last year. Now I will have no textbooks as we begin our classes. Mr. Y Sh Shikar? He didn't lie when he said standing here would be done in high school. Fuck. I'm just as bored and care just a little about what's going on with me. Something remarkable. Happened only on the, at the first break. Hi, what's your name? Ayaka, stop being me. Pinko Gursa appeared right in front of me. She smiled something sweet, and with this color, it seemed that her hair really was made out of bubblegum or something like that. Eh, more like cotton candy. I love cotton candy. My name is. I love tailoring. I really want to be friends. Want to be mine? What? 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 what, 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 what? I won. <laughs> What's your name again? Bye, pilot. And I think I already saw you this morning. Oh yes, that was You won't think poorly of me because it, right? No, I absolutely won't. Awesome. So what's your hobby? I'm a tailor. Want some cool badges? I can sew one to your uniform. I have not worked my uniform. But I have a feeling you're gonna be like one of my favorites. I think. Fuck the rules! It is. Is it? I literally do not care. I already promised to the girls. <laughs> Alright, now. I'll sew them on the inside of you. So no one can see. Oh! She just go person to person, t tells the same thing about herself to each one of them. Yes, that's exactly what I do. I heard her chat with nearby people, and found out that that really is the case. Aside from that, this day was as boring as it could be. I even drew a picture of Ayaka. Not, sh I'm not going to show the it to a psychologist or Ayaka. Finally, classes are over. It's the first day, and I'm already tired. Should I go to the kitchen? <laughs> Holy fucking shit! My god, did she break the door with her foot? Mr. Yoshi... Yoshiaka. All, all the personnel files are ready. Let's sort them out now. Oh, I'm sorry, Kimiko san But I need to go hand in my report. Just ten minutes. So you need to find someone else. Seems like Miss Preston has a grip on the teachers, too. Kimiko san ma, please, let me help you out! Though at that point, that character is me, it's a bad person. Give me a second chance! Oh, wonderful. This beautiful girl will increase me. And I'll catch go. I don't know. I don't know. That's impossible. You can't just be replaced by some student. Mr. Yoshi. Yoshi, huh? Just some student. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. I need to find someone to help me, like, huh? I will! Will you 
Ciao. 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 And also, like, socialization and stuff. I mean, what would I do if not that? Yeah, sure, sounds like something I can believe in. Yes, of course, why not? Really? Thank you! This is my pet gun. We'll help you together. Good for you. Goodbye. Calm down! Let's go then. We left the classroom. Kimka walks so fast on her long legs that we could hardly keep up. Poor Akka ha almost had to run. Oh, I'd be walking way past her. Thanks for offering to help. I knew you were a great guy. Since you let me pass while we were in line. I still hate him, but hey, I'm basically just getting to work with me too. Went down the first floor, came to a closed door at the end of the corridor. There was a closed sign at the door. Laid next to a box of personal files. Chemical kicked them and commanded. Take the take all of these! Follow me! The burden was quite heavy, and the box was struck my view. Now go! Wait! the greatest of all the Let's carry these boxes. Too bad. I can't open the door locks for you. Good point. I can't do this where I can feel like right now. After several minutes, the physical abuse will reach your destination. Oh wow, the door is actually open. You can guess. Put all of them on the floor. Ayaka and I finally got the chance to look around. Judging by the chair, Arranged the sun circle is a small time meeting room. Here, although it does not seem to have much use now, I could looked exhausted and managed to put on her wide smile in just a second. Are you proud of us, Kimiko sama? It's just the beginning. Now you have to sort them properly. Ouch. Nothing difficult. I already marked them with colored bookmarks. You have three cabinets, all except. All except one have four shelves. Green files, first cabinet, first shelf, third cabinet. First shelf, third cabinet, second shelf. Yellow files, third shelf, second cabinet, first and third. Oh boy. Red ones, and second, last, and first. Blue, third and first, second and second. Orange, and a free shelves. All clear? Do we? Great, I'll take care of some things and then come back here to check on your work. Good luck! Kimiko quickly left the room, leaving me and Ayaka alone. Well, fuck. Ouch. Well. Sorry I dragged you into this. I thought it would be fun. It was just sad to look at Ayaka right now. It was obvious Kimiko was just mocking us. Why did she do it? Maybe Ayaka screwed up in the morning. But I'm here almost by accident. No worries. We'll handle it somehow. Pathetic attempt to inspire, I admit. But apparently it worked. You're right. Pilot, we'll sort all this, this all out and Miss Kimiko will be so proud of us. Let's go! Oh, I don't even remember. Right, the fighting spirit died very quickly. Bye, Pilot. Where did the orange ones go? On any shelf that isn't occupied. This one occupied? Something on it? No? It's the third cabinet. Wait, wait, which one was the third and which one was the first? From right to left. My pet gun. I thought it had to be left to right.
I can try to make things that change possible, like the random files are turned out, the conversation with people. On the other hand, I was just doing my job. It's actually not too bad. It's actually not that bad to be helpful. The work went on, and we lost track of time. That was the last one. Smells like victory. Love smell of napalm and moon. Smells like victory. Apparently she always had enough energy to rejoice. What, what Kimiko said to do once we were done with all this? Hmm. I don't remember that part to be honest. But Ayaka says, we need to go get some rest. <laughs> oh shit! Not a... Do the doorknob! Kimiko busted into the room. And so does smell the smell of something burning. Coffee and mint. Are you still here? So you didn't know. So you open doors like that not to scare us. Is it just the way you are? And now she's standing there with an uncertain look as if done something wrong. Did you actually do everything? Of course we did. I told you I'm a good person. I could jump and almost oop, didn't, but Kimiko stopped her by grabbing Ayaka like a kitten. I bet Ayaka already forget she was the one who suggested to drop everything and flee. Is that all for now, Kimiko san? Are you proud of us? And are we free to go? You are. Awesome. Don't know about you, but I'm going to the canteen! It's already closed. What? But I haven't eaten anything all day! Bipod, are you hungry too? Yes. Yes, I am. Huh. Kimiko looked at... Kimiko looked at us as if, as if choosing between pity and desertion. Fine. Follow me. We lined up behind our mother duck and moved down the corridor. Days grew shorter. The sky was already fire red. We walked to the dining room where Edna were. We walked towards the dining room. Edna was silent, especially Ayaka. She must have felt like she was in some sort of bench or something. When we reached the canteen, Kimiko pulled out her set of keys. Does anyone have any allergies to anything? Nothing food related. Birch pollen! Stand here. Go open it with the door. Of course, you'd be locked it from the inside. So cool. This Kimiko likes so much that she wants to feed us personally. Why is it whether or not she like? Why is whether or not she likes you so important? Because if she doesn't, that because if she does, it means I'll definitely get to student council. Exactly. Powerful friends, powerful positions. Why is it so important to get there? Because it's the easiest way to make friends. Fair enough. Look, I'm not even in council yet, but I already have one. This is the second person who claims to be my friend on the first day. We met. Has it really been that easy all this time? Yes. Kimiko walked out with two bags of pastries. Leftovers from today. It's supposed to be thrown away, but here we're saving it for the next day. You go eat in your rooms. I have business to sell. Business does she have this late? I wish you a good night in advance. Thanks a lot, and good night, Kimiko san. Good night. Good night. Kimiko follows us to the exit, and the watch just all the way down to the dorms. But her look didn't bother us too much, despite her command. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, double B2. Bye. Bye. Pie in the mouth, we split up, went to our buildings. Eventful day. Most eventful this year, I believe. <sighs> Came to my room, which looked oh, which looked more attractive than last time. Especially the bed. I fell right in after it. This is probably a normal daily routine for people like Rectum Ayaka and Workaholic Kimiko. Eh, I'm both. Stark contrast to my previous life. Wow, well, I said previous life. Probably a good sign. Maybe something more calm would suit me better. Don't know. Thinking about my future. I just... I don't even take... I just take everything off. Hop in bed. And sleep. Fuck. Who's calling at this hour? Really now? Is it mine? Raised my head from the pillow. 
in my eyes. The ring echoed loudly through the room. Mine. But where the hell is it? Search my bed, table, nothing. Fine, I have to get up. I got up and tried to listen to where the sound's coming from. Well, I got nothing. It's coming from nowhere. It's logical to assume that I have it somewhere in my pocket. Where else could I put a cell phone? I took up. I took a close look. Sid searched through all the pockets, nothing. The ringing didn't stop, it only became louder instead. Does that mean it's inside the closet? I searched the entire thing, examining with my hands, in case my eyes are fooling me. But no. I wasted several minutes. So on this. Who even wants to talk to me that badly in the middle of the fucking night? And why is my wrist sleep when the ringing phone is almost shaking the windows? Because it's not ringing. Here's my phone. On the nightstand, turned off. Time for me to pass out as well. So I'm back. My bed against the cold wall and wrap myself in a blanket. Fucking hallucinations. A couple of minutes, sound began to fade away. Disgusting. Yeah, then I fade completely and I fell asleep. Oh. Ugh. I woke up. I think I woke up only just now. Well, hello there. To find myself in a doctor's office. Like I hope no one has seen. I would never have to see more of these snowy hospital walls again. The doctor looked very tired and grumpy, dressed in warm clothes that are not suitable for the weather. Where did you, and what were you doing in the morning? What did you have for breakfast? What were your first glasses? Boring. I'm not hungry. What is my name? The doctor and I glanced at the door and said. Shiro Masaja. Gee. No, really, I think I'm alright. So I jumped up from my chair and realized this is how I looked at my clothes for a second and sat down again. Yes, I see. It's okay, I have a lot of recommendations from my It's nothing out of the ordinary. I'll contact him again just in case. Please, come see me tomorrow. In the meantime, I know the drawing. That drawing brings you a lot of me. I think it's worth getting around to the article. Like today. I heard I heard we're supposed to get there only at the end of the week. Do you really care? Smell luck get each other one more time. That was the end of my appointment. Oh fuck. So Shit. Now I just need to find out where the art club is. And what time is it? Turned out I still had a couple classes left. So I return to the classroom. Even though I've gotten my senses since the second part of the day, about the same way as the first. Technically, I was there. My body was. My mind, though. Well, that was a large story. Life returned to me only at the end of the classes. I went to look for the art club, but... Hi, where are you going? But, well, this. I want to see the art club. Wow. You love drawing so much that you just can't wait anymore. To be honest. To be honest, me too! I will join the club. I will also join my club beforehand. And you know where it is? Of course. All clubs are on the third floor. Didn't you run all of the colors grounds on your first day? want to see more, tell me. I, I was doing this video for a friend of mine, so I hope you enjoyed. I've, I've never really played that many visual novels before, so this was an experience. So, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Bye, pilot, out.